Hey, good morning everybody. It's about 11.31. If I sound like I'm a little out of it, it's because I just got back from work. From work, I work for my brother-in-law uh, once in a while on these pressure washing deals. And he starts me out small, so I'm kind of just washing the tires of these semi-trucks and all that. So, But anyway, welcome to the Monthly Opinions, the June edition of the Sun of my opinions on the Sonic the Hitchcock franchise and comic book. Now, apparently the big news coming out is everybody's talking about 226. Now, I have recently gotten to I recently got 226 yesterday. And I read the issue and you can wa read my review and you can read my uh, video before my review where I kind of have a link in the video before that where I say I got where I say basically I got 226. And in that uh, video before my review, I have posted links to my, some pictures that you can find on my photo bucket page. But uh, anyway, wow, what a begin, folks. You know, a lot of people have been tossing around theories uh, over the past uh, few months and few weeks. You know, and, and even those in the letter pages are not really happy about the ending of 225. And like I said in my review, and I'll say it again here, I believe the reason Genesis was made, and I said this before in a way, I think what Ian is trying to do is he's trying to balance things out. You know, uh, one, one, uh, Sonic, one fellow Sonic fan, Satayam and Sonic comic fan and whatever, uh, Tross, he said that basically Ian has gone on record as saying he is a fan of Sally. He strongly supports Sally. He considers Sally one of the strongest females in the book. And what he did to Sally in 225 just doesn't make sense. They said that when Sally was supposed to die, in fact they compared it to the fact that when Sally was supposed to die in Endgame, it was shown on panel. Now, her death in this scenario is shown off panel, so it kind of doesn't really make sense. A lot of people don't buy what's going on. Well, like I said before, I think, like I said before in my review, I think what Genesis is, is not just a soft reboot, if you will, of, uh, of the comic, but it's more the fact that it's basically a starting point, a refreshing, a refreshing starting point, a fresh starting point, if you will, for the newer readers. See, a lot of the newer readers are more fans of the game continuity than they are anything else. So, it, what it seems to me, because I, and, I, and I read the issue and I mentioned this in my review, I think what Ian is doing is he's trying to balance out, trying to balance, he's trying to balance out the comics continuity. So, you, so like, on one hand, you have 50% game continuity mixed in with 50% Satayam comic continuity so that everybody gets some, everybody gets you know what they want so that, that's what it seems to me but again I can't really be sure about it now you know a lot of people have gone on record even before Genesis began and said you know after 225 that you know, even before 226 came out, a lot of fans came out and said, you know, this is just Ian's way of trying to fix something that he probably can't fix. You know, again, uh, to, to me, it's more the fact that maybe he's painting himself into a corner, maybe not, but I think more the fact that he's just trying to balance things out. I'm trying to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. I think he's trying to balance things out between one fan base which is fan base of the game continuity and another fan base which is fan base of the Satayam comic book continuity that's what I believe I, I mean I, I know a lot of people probably find that hard to believe but there are others out there like Tross and Laser X5 uh, and a few others out there Dark, Fo Dark Fox and you know just Henry Double I, whatever, uh, you know, just a lot of people out there. Porpoise Muffins, if you will, Porpoise Muffins, you know, 
Maiko, Amiko, um, you know, just a lot of people, Toby Barnett, oh, Toby Barnett, you know, a lot of these people just really kind of have the opinions. A lot of them don't really believe, you know, a word that Ian says. And, you know, it's, to them, it's like Ian is treating them like they were born yesterday or they just got introduced into the book, into the book continuity now. Um, honestly, again, I, I think what's going on, it, it's just my opinion, but again, you know, giving the guy the benefit of the doubt, I think he's trying to balance things out. He's trying to please everybody by saying, okay, after Genesis, we're going to probably be 50% con game continuity mixed in with 50% Saturday and comic book continuity. So kind of like, in, in other words, it's like a balancing out. It's like, okay, you still have the characters from the Saturday and the comic, but now it's more game related. It's more of a game continuity deal. That, to me, that's what it seems like he wants to do. He's experimenting with. You know, some people will say that Sega mandated it. Yeah, so, well, I wouldn't say Sega mandated it. I, I think in a way they did have a hand in it. But according to what Ian has said and some others close to him have said and even some fellow fans have said, yeah, they may have had, they may have had a hand in it, but they didn't mandate it. Because, you know, Ian, according to one person here on YouTube, they told me that Ian was surprised that Sega gave him the okay to do what he did. And I don't, and I don't think it was just, you know, okay, kill Sally. I think it was more the fact of, okay, reset everything and see what happens. Basically, wipe everybody out and reset it. Uh, again, if you look at the pictures I posted in the links in the video, in the uh, Got Sonic 226 Today video, if you take a look at those, those you will see that essentially to me there's a lot of hints there there's a lot of clues and again it's like okay does Ian think we're really and again it's like you know people look at Ian and they say do you, does Ian think we're really that stupid again I don't think Ian and again going again going on the fact I want to give the guy the benefit of the doubt I don't think Ian believes we're stupid or anything. I think it's more the fact that Ian has done this for the newer readers, those that are more were introduced to the comic more from more, more through the through the game continuities like but like um, like Sonic Adventure, which you see in front of you. You know, I think that's what he's doing. And again, I believe there's going to be a balancing out possibly at at the end of all this because that's what it looks like he wants to do a balancing out. Now, as far as some other things go, um, you know, you look at the letters page in 226, and he's really trying to throw off the new readers. Some don't want no cast changes, but, he, but they're not really saying what's going to happen. I can tell you this, if anything happens to, like, say, a character like Bunny Rabbit, Bunny Rabbit, fans will be pissed. Fans will be pissed off, I'll tell you that. Anything happens to Julie Sue, um, Knuckles maybe, you know, a lot of fans are going to be pissed. And, you know, they might have a right to be, but you know what? That's just how fans are. They won't like everything he does. But I don't think he's going to get rid of Bunny Rabba because she was already described online in ArchieComics.com as having nothing happen to her. You know, so we don't really know. And, you know, and then again, the debate is still up in the air as to what character is really going to die. You know, a lot of people still, a lot of people feel it still could be Sally because they got that feeling, that n not trusting feeling. And the fact that Ian has kind of, you know, surprised us on occasions. But others feel it could be Nicole. And others feel, you know, Sally could, if, you know, it is Sally and the life hangs in the balance predicament, you know, that she'd just be dying or she'd just be wounded and that's it. But a lot of people still feel it could be Nicole because a lot of signs, according to some fans, 
like myself, point to it, but again, we could be wrong because he's pulled rabbits out of his hats before. And he's thrown us curveballs. All in the past. So we'll just have to wait and find out. Um, again, and you know, and again, in my opinion, and I've said this in many of my audio videos, in many of my uh, video videos like this, I, I've come out and I've said it. I, you know, I believe this is eventually going to lead to Eggman eventually, after it's all said and done, either at the end of this arc, at the end of the year-long situation, according to Ian, that's going to take place, or the year-long effects that are going to take place for the next year or so. I believe what's going to happen with the Eggman Robotnik character is he's going to end up in the nut house again. He's going to basically be go insane again. And I don't know, you know, it's just a gut feeling I have, but I feel Feist or the Zone Cop Zonic is going to play a huge, a huge role in it. You know, I, I think eventually one of them, maybe the, the Zone Cop down the line is going to finally corner Eggman and say, Eggman, a.k.a. Robo Robotnik, you know, the reason you can never beat Sonic in this world is because Sonic Prime always wins against evil. So, you know, that that's my gut feeling. Something like that's going to happen. Or Feist is going to finally intervene, you know, and help reset things. And Eggman's basically going to be like, oh shit, I really blew it. So, I don't know. I mean, there's just some, some things there that tell you especially in 225 that tell you Eggman is not going to be sane or semi-sane much longer. It, it, it just... It, it just... It's just not there. It's just not possible. You know? I mean, I've got a feeling this is going to lead to possibly the Dark Egg Legion and maybe even Snively turning on him down the line again and saying, hey, look, you nearly took us all out just because you're obsessed with being free of Sonic or beating Sonic. You know, you could say, oh, leave the Hitchhog alone and all that, but the truth is, all you're obsessed with is trying to beat the Hitchhog. So, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I could be right, but as a longtime fan, and many of you may agree with it, many of you may not agree with it, I just got this gut feeling. It's just a gut feeling that I have, and I truly believe that's what could happen. You know, I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, it's not going to happen. It's, you know, it's impossible to happen. It's, you know, I'm, uh, I'm dreaming. No, I feel, as a, my, my good feeling is something like that is going to happen, and I truly believe it. Um, so that's just my take on that. Um, as far as the Hershey situation goes, according to one of the letters being responded to in 226, Ian says, hey, don't worry, stay tuned. Ian or Paul... They say, don't worry, stay tuned, think all things will be revealed. So by saying that to a fan, it tells me that Hershey's still alive, but she, could end, but she could be in a situation in which many fans are hoping she's not in, and that's a Dark Egg Legion situation. So, you know, who knows? Or maybe she's just an enslaved person that helped gather power rings. We don't know. So we'll just have to wait and find out. Um, now, as far as this whole Scourge story arc in Sonic Universe goes, um, I haven't read read it yet, but from what people have said and what summaries I've read, it sounds pretty good. sounds like it's going to be interesting. It sounds like, you know, Fiona... Because remember, Fiona said something to Lightning Lynx in the Journey to the East story arc that everybody is going to pay that she's got basically by she said that everybody was going to pay for what they did and it sounds like when she talked to Lightning Lynx after getting him back into Destructives Destructix it's something big she's got something big planned and it, ha and it possibly has to involve Scourge so in my opinion this is all has to do with this big plan that Fiona has so I've got a feeling that after the whole Genesis deal and things get reset that Fiona is going to be the next. Fiona's plan is going to be the next big thing out of the out of the main con common continuity. But you know, uh, one thing a lot of fans are always wondering about is, okay, 
who's going to get left behind? Because recently, uh, the the previews recently the preview description for the last issue of this full part arc, a full part story arc in Sonic Universe, uh, was released, and it says somebody's going to get left behind. And a lot of people are kind of pondering, a lot of fans are pondering on who that could be. And a lot of fans are thinking it could be Fiona. You know, some some feel that if it's Fiona, it kind of shows her that, hey, you know, she got what was coming to her. Or Kama is a bitch, if you know what I'm saying. Or some feel that if it's Fiona, it's going to make her think, oh my God, I can't trust anybody. I can't trust anybody. Or... Another scenario, which I'm pretty sure a lot of fans would hope for, is it's going to, if she gets left behind by Scourge after, and the Destructives, after her trying to break him out and everything and save him, she's going to realize, possibly, and this is just a, something that a lot of fans, including myself, would hope for, you know, something like, you know, maybe being a freedom fighter wasn't that big, a, bad of an idea, you know. Or you know, something like that. But a lot of fans feel it could be Fiona. But a lot of other fans feel it could be Destructives themselves. But no one really knows. But it sounds like this whole helping Scourge get break out of jail and stuff, it sounds like it's all part of some kind of big plan Fiona's got. Because remember, she dropped a hint that something big was going to go down to Lightning Links after she got him back into Destructives. Uh, destructives and away from conquering storm. So it sounds like something big's going to happen there. Now, that's just my opinion on that. Now, as far as other parts of the franchise, Sonic Generations, the video game. Um, if you go on PSN and uh, Xbox, you get a 20-day demo, probably now 18 or 17-day demo. Of Sonic Generations and I played it and it looks pretty good it gives you two options when you play it it gives you an option of doing a 3d deal because on one side you might have classic Sonic on the other side you have modern Sonic or it just gives you the 1d deal or 2d deal which just like a 3d rendition of Sonic 1 now apparently it looks in a, and it looks like a pretty good game. You know, I, I played the demo, I played the first level. It looks pretty good. Now, apparently, Archie Comics is going to do a tie-in with this, in what is dubbed, as Ian has already put it, another time, another place, a right, situation. It's going to tie in with this whole situation in Genesis. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Because Genesis, if Genesis is supposed to be part of the main storyline, then how is it another alternate time and place? I don't get it. But anyway, you know, that's just my thought on it, thought on that, and then overall, Sonic Generations it looks like it's going to be a very good game, probably the best out of the whole, best Sonic game in quite some time. So, and you know, speaking of Sonic games, I'm really looking forward to the London Olympic Games edition of the Mario and Sonic Olympics series, coming in November. So... Um, overall, those are just my opinions on the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book and franchise for the month of June 2011. I thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a great day, a great Sunday. I'm going to go right now and sh <laughs> go right now and wash up and shower because um, I was working all morning. I woke from ba I woke up at basically three o'clock in the morning. And I haven't been to, I haven't been, and I just got back about 30 minutes ago. So. Oh, so <laughs> uh, that's all I'm gonna say. I thank you all for watching. Again, comment down below if you like. Tell me what you guys think. Do you agree with some of my opinions in this video or not? Uh, let me know. I would like to hear your feedback. And on a, another personal note, before I leave, I want to say happy 20th anniversary and birthday to the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. I remember when I first heard about the game, I remember going to my cousins to play it. I remember when they first announced the cartoon series, it was in 93, and then finding out about the comic through that. So, I have a lot of memories, and I'll probably do a video down the line about that. But, again, 
ending this by saying happy 20th anniversary to Sonic the Hedgehog franchise and the Blue Valera himself. And that's all I'm going to say. Comment down below. Thank you all for watching and peace out.